Charlie Kirk is admitting that mm, there is a price to pay to being able to uh, play cosplay revolutionary and that uh, he's more than willing for you to pay it. Take a look. Having an armed citizenry comes with a price. Wow. And, and that, that, that is part of liberty. You will never live in a society when you have an armed citizenry and you won't have a single gun death. That is nonsense. It's drivel. Wow. But I, am, I, I, think it's, I think it's worth it. I think it's worth to have a cost of, unfortunately, some gun deaths every single year so that we can have the Second Amendment to protect our other God-given rights. That is a prudent deal. It is rational. Mm, is it? Uh, well, let's look at the numbers. Now, that happened uh, during a TPUSA faith event on Wednesday. And uh, again, that was in response, actually, to a question about, hey, you know, there was a, a, a mass shooting in, in Tennessee. Uh, and so yeah, how do we uh, how do we protect ourselves? And, uh, you know, how do we make the argument that, hey, maybe we should, uh, you know, uh, or, or how do we make the argument to counter the left in wanting to restrict some uh, access to some uh, weapons? So now, in his response, I agree that he said that uh, when he said that there's a price, there is a price. Let me give you the numbers on that. Um, every year, about 117,345 people are shot every year in, this, in the United States. Okay, well, shot, does that mean you were killed? No, at least 40,000 of them die from gun violence in general. Oh, okay. Uh, now, nearly 8,000 of that uh, are children from the ages of 0 to 18. Break it down even further, about 321 people of all ages are shot every single day. Between the ages of uh, 1 and 17, about 22 children are shot every single day so not not all of those are you know uh deaths or lead to deaths some of them are accidents some of them are suicides some of them are unintentional shootings uh, some are of course uh, by police officers or, or you know law enforcement okay basically that's your price those are just the numbers so now he says well that's the price for liberty right it's 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 a it's the price for liberty to live in a free free country to protect our fucking rights. Okay, um, except the fact that we're actually not free. At least not as free as they want to argue. So uh, let me look at the um, democracy index. This is from the Economist Intelligence Unit's democracy index ranking. Uh, in 2022, they found that the United States ranked 26th out of 167 countries. Okay, 26th. But wait a minute. Isn't the argument is that more guns equals more freedom? We have the most guns in the, like, in the world. We've got 4% of the population. We've got a quarter of the guns. We have more guns than people, uh, about 120.5 guns for every 100 people. Should we not be number one on freedom? The most free in the world. No, we're 26th. Interesting. Uh, now, by the way, uh, let me give you the details on how they asked, uh, you know, basically uh, what they looked at when it came to freedom. Uh, they measured electoral process. Okay, so elections. Uh, government functionality, does the government work or not? Uh, political participation, voting, very important. Political culture and civil liberties. Okay, which again, you know, freedoms when, when it comes to freedom of speech, uh, freedom, freedom of expression, uh, being able to defend yourself, that kind of stuff. All right, so now the, you, the researchers who looked at this uh, had uh, this to say about the United States low score on some of these factors, right? Both of which are tied to polarization, functioning of government and political culture. Now, I've said before, our political culture is very, very fragmented uh, and there is a gun culture that's part of it. They said this, 
Pluralism and competing alternatives are essential for functioning democracy, but differences of opinion in the United States have hardened into political sectarianism and institutional gridlock. Okay, so um, we're not as free as we claim to be, as the right says we are, okay? And by the way, while they're also arguing that uh, we are living in Banana Republic, style, uh, Stalin, sorry, Mao, and Pol Pot. Um, okay. Uh, but, you know, uh, we're also apparently super divided. And there's a lot of people that are extremely well armed. Does that sound like a good combination? I wouldn't think so. But that said, I just want to be careful to let you know that we're nowhere near like civil war levels of division. I know there's a lot of people that are out there saying something different <laughs> temple um they believe that or they spread that narrative but in reality while we are divided on a lot of different issues the vast majority are not like you know getting ready for civil war that's a, that's a very very small minority of insane people just i just wanted to 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 put that out there okay uh now that said he, uh, Charlie Kirk had also said that uh, the Second Amendment, well, it's not for hunting. It's not even for self-defense. No, no, no. The reason that we need to protect the Second Amendment is the same speech uh, as, well, we have to fight tyranny. You see, we have to fight governmental tyranny with our armed militias. Are you reading the Founding Fathers? Well, hold on here. Wait, wait, wait. The Continental Army, not militias, is what actually secured our freedom from the British in the Revolutionary War. I'm not saying the militias didn't play a part, but it, they're often more romanticized and in stories and, and media, they tend to play a much larger role in our imagination than they actually did on the battlefield. We had a standing army that did the majority of the work in that war. And by the way, another idea of the, the militias, and of course, every person being part of that militia, which is, again, why you should hone guns uh, in the home. Uh, well, that was uh, originally so that we wouldn't have a standing army because a standing army, the thought went, uh, is, you know, could lead to government being tyrannical. So if you don't have that and you just have militias, then you don't have the tyranny. But wait, oops, not only do we have a standing army, but we actually have one of the most cash bloated and wasteful when it comes to spending $800 billion a year, more than any other military on in the world. And again, massively wasteful. Uh, and we have that because you have politicians on all sides, yes, Democrats, Republicans, uh, that keep shoveling more and more cash into the hands of the military industrial complex. So, you know, the whole purpose of the whole militia thing, we've kind of defeated that and actually made it so that, you know, we, we have this massive military industrial complex that's going to crush, you know, average people armed with AR-15s. It makes no sense. History failed. Just everything failed. Uh, and, and, and by the way, policy, right? In fact, Charlie Kirk uh, then uh, also went in uh, as to saying, you know, you could significantly reduce gun deaths. Even though you can't get rid of them completely, you could significantly reduce gun deaths by doing this one thing. What is that, Charlie Kirk? By having more fathers in the home. What? We just got to put more, it's got to have more fathers in the home. That'll cut down on all the gun violence. The, what? Nonsense point. Uh, and look, I've got another clip here. He's going to make more ridiculous nonsense, po nonsense points. Watch. People say, oh, Charlie, how do you stop school shootings? I don't know. How did we stop shootings at baseball games? Because we have armed guards outside of baseball games. That's why. <laughs> How do we stop all the shootings at airports? We have armed guards outside of airports. 
How do we stop all the shootings at banks? We have armed guards outside of banks. How do we stop all the shootings at gun shows? Notice there's not a lot of mass shootings at gun shows. There's all these guns. Because everyone's armed. Ah, yes. Oh, you see, uh, there are guns there. There are guns everywhere. And so everywhere there's guns, there's no shootings, except that that's not true at all. Um, are you saying that we stopped all mass shootings at airports, baseball games, <laughs> and gun shows? No, no, no. Um, look, I don't even have to, like, pull up stats. All you can do is just look at airport shootings, and there's a bunch of them. And some, by the way, are, that are even stopped with armed guards, so maybe that's a point in his direction, okay? Uh, but again, there's been lots of shooting at airports, and by the way, even with guards that do eventually stop the shooter, there's still people that are shot and killed. And maybe that goes to his overall point. Well, you can't stop all of them, but... I mean, you know, uh, uh, price of freedom, price of freedom, price of freedom. Except this happens more here in, in this country than anywhere else in the entire world. And again, there's also been uh, plenty of shootings at baseball games, including one of the more ones that you should know, the congressional baseball uh, shooting involving Republican Steve Scalise. I mean, that, and, and look at uh, Banks. There's also been plenty of shootings inside of banks. All of this is very easily located information. But I want to get to the point about gun shows. Because I think that's the most fun point to debunk. So I said, well, it's gun shows. There's never any shootings at gun shows. No, I, well, okay, maybe you qualified it by saying, well, there's no mass shootings at gun shows, but there's all sorts of other shootings. Here's some examples. In 2008, an eight-year-old boy died after accidentally shooting himself in the head of the gun show in Massachusetts. By, by the way, there was also gun ranges. It's another place where there's lots of guns, right? Uh, well, I seem to remember a story where there was a mass shooting at a gun range. And in 2014, a nine-year-old girl shot and killed her instructor at a gun range in Arizona. Five people in three states were injured when weapons accidentally went off at another gun show in one day in January of 2013. A man seriously injured himself outside an Iowa gun show by accidentally shooting himself in 2018. Well, I mean, that counts. That counts. And according to a 2017 study by the University of California, Berkeley, they found a nearly 70% increase in deaths and injuries from firearms in California communities within, get this, convenient driving distance of Nevada gun shows. So just even the presence of a gun show in a very loosely regulated state leads to an increase in gun violence in surrounding areas. The state of Nevada, the study notes, has some of the least restrictive firearm laws in the country and no explicit regulations on gun shows, whereas California has some of the strongest firearm, uh, firearm laws in, in the country. But if you're getting them from a place that has no regulation you just pick them up easily legally what's to prevent those guns from finding their ways in the places that do have more stringent gun laws and that's sort of the problem that we have right we just have we have places that have no rules right next to places that have rules it seems to not be working very well and again that's not even to mention the whole gun show thing uh, where, you know, we have all the uh, just, we have so many mass shootings in this country nearly every single day. But apparently, uh, Charlie Kirk thinks that that's just the price of liberty. Even though, as I had pointed out earlier, there are countries with much tighter gun laws that have less guns and are somehow freer than the United States with happier populations. Well, how is that? Well, what, what has happened? Well, it turns out when you have a better economic system and a more inclusive society where you have labor protections, where you have guaranteed health care, mental health coverage, all that stuff, 
you tend to have a lot better outcomes 